Now, the Trump Justice Department has just released an indictment of Lebanese American businessman George Nader. Uh, so now, uh, George Nader, uh, you can see his picture. Uh, he had allegedly conspired to funnel money, uh, launder money, uh, more than $3 million in illegal campaign contributions towards uh, 2016 presidential candidates, as well as political committees, according to a recent report. So now, uh, this is HuffPost reporting. Um, and uh, this is based on released, uh, I'm sorry, recently unsealed uh, indictments from the Trump Justice Department. So now, George Nader was not working alone. Uh, he had a co-conspirator named Andy Kawaja. Uh, Kawaja. So now, uh, Andy Kawaja is the CEO of Allied Wallet. So I've never heard of Allied Wallet. Apparently, they are a payment processing company. And so George Nader, Andy uh, Kawaja working together to funnel money to these uh, candidates. So now, the goal, according to the Justice Department, uh, of funneling this money is to, quote, gain influence with high-level political figures. Which, of course, no kidding. I, look, I always go back to the arguments made against uh, money in politics, right? And this is a good example of that. Uh, where they say, oh, no, money. Pff, no, money does not uh, influence anyone. No, 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 money is just speech. You're just talking to these people. Well, does that look like talking to you? Funneling all this money to try to gain influence? We all know it. But yet there are people on the Supreme Court that are like, oh, no, no, money does not buy influence. What are you talking about? Hillary Clinton. It's like, oh, no, the money that people donate to me does not influence me whatsoever. How stupid do they think we are? How stupid. They must think we're the dumbest people in the world to believe that. Nobody buys it. Nobody. All right. So let's get to the story. So now, who are the people that are, uh, you know, that he was trying to influence with all of this, all of this cash? Well, we're not exactly sure. Uh, at least the Justice Department isn't saying anything. However, Politico did report on this, uh, and they looked through uh, campaign finance records, and they found out that at least one person, Democratic candidate Hillary Clinton, was among the people that Nader allegedly sought to influence with this money. So here we have Hillary Clinton. This George Nader guy says, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to funnel money to Hillary Clinton so I can, quote unquote, influence her. Oh, OK. Well, uh, now that is an odd choice, however, because as it's shown here, he is, uh, this guy, George Nader, is a liaison to Donald Trump between Trump and Russia. So that's interesting. Not only that, but Nader also has ties with Steve Bannon and Jared Kushner. And so that's really strange that he's trying to influence Hillary Clinton during the election. Uh, so now he also, uh, giving money to Hillary Clinton, also gave to Donald Trump's inaugural campaign, about a million dollars. And we'll get to the uh, more of the figures here uh, in a bit. But now Nader, according to HuffPost, who served as an informal advisor to the UAE uh, and also as liaison between Trump campaign and officials in Russia and the Middle East, so probably Saudi Arabia, um, allegedly plotted with Kawaja to conceal the origin of more than $3.5 million in campaign contributions to political committees associated with 2016 presidential candidates. By design, these uh, contributions appeared to be in the name of Kawaja, his wife and his company, according to the Justice Department. In reality, they were allegedly funded by Nader, uh, adding that Kawaja and Nader had arranged these payments. So Nader has the money. Kawaja, uh, of course, had the ability. Uh, he had both the company and his wife uh, in order to act as a conduit for that money to go to Democratic and Republican politicians. Uh, and so mostly a lot of this money went to Democrats. And let's be completely 100% fair on that uh, because those are the facts. 
Uh, so now they tried to use this money, like I said, to influence Democratic politicians, likely because Hillary Clinton was seen more likely to beat Donald Trump. And so this is a case, of course, of these people wanting influence, wanting to corrupt an administration that they seen as eminently corruptible, which, again, if you're familiar with Hillary Clinton, is kind of on the mark. So now, not only that, but Nader might have been trying to do this on behalf of a foreign government. This Again, this is according to the Trump Justice Department, right? Uh, so now Nader had allegedly reported to an official from a foreign government about his efforts to gain said influence. Now, the identity of that foreign government has not been revealed yet. So we don't know who it is. And so that is very interesting. Okay. So now, this isn't the first time Kouaj has been in trouble, by the way, for doing shady activities. Uh, and so you might ask, what kind of activities? Well, last year in an Associated Press investigation, found evidence that Kawaja was running shady payday lending services as well as an illegal gambling outfit. So now Kawaja's company had also uh, allegedly helped sneak into the international banking system by fraudulent means. So according to the AP, Allied Wallet, his company, defied bank policies, credit card network rules, and potentially broke U.S. money laundering laws basically saying they laundered money. And surprise, some of this ill-gotten money, these ill-gotten gains, made their way to politicians in the form of legalized bribery, which is campaign contributions. And Kawaja uh, contributed more than $4 million to Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign, as well as other Democrats. We don't know who they are. Uh, the AP reported after Trump won the presidency, Kawaja donated a million dollars to Trump's inaugural committee. Therefore, I believe hedging his bets, maybe in case he ever got caught, he might get, I don't know, a lesser sentence or maybe not caught at all. Buying off both Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. And so that's the state of our politics today, where you have corruption pretty much everywhere in the form of campaign contributions. Now talk about surrounding himself with some of the best people, by the way, being a liaison between Trump and Russia. And so that's very interesting. Uh, now, Kawaja also faces allegations. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, before we get to that, actually. So now the AP report ended up leading to a federal probe into Kawaja and Allied Wallet. Uh, in May, that actually led to charges here uh, and a fine. Kawaja, his company, and two senior officials uh, at the firm agreed to pay $110 million to settle FTC, commission, uh, FTC charges that they participated in numerous scams that involved knowingly processing payments for merchants engaged in fraud. So that's interesting. Uh, now, $110 million, by the way, that might seem like a lot, right? Not really. I mean, again, when you're looking at these very large companies that sometimes make it billions of dollars a year, $110 million, slap in the wrist. So it's not going to really stop them, especially when a large mar uh, amount of money they receive from illicit means. So now Kawaja also faces allegations of conspiring with six other individuals. Uh, Roy Bulos, Rudy... Uh, not Giuliani, Decker uh, Menjian, Modieb, Ronnie El Saudi, Stephen uh, Stephen Hill, and Thane Whipple to uh, basically conceal an additional one point eight million dollars in political contributions, according to the indictment. So, these contributions were allegedly used by Kawaja uh, to, among other things, host private fundraisers for presidential candidates in 2016 and an elected official in 2018. Again, one of those uh, political candidates was Hillary Clinton. In fact, Kawaja, according to Politico, co-hosted an August 26th fundraiser for Hillary Clinton in LA. So, 
Yikes. So that's Kawaja, right? And that's just, that's a co-conspirator. That's the guy whose company and name this money was funneled by. George Nader, George Nader's worse. Now, again, George Nader, liaison for the Trump campaign for Russia and the UAE. Uh, and he was, uh, by the way, a key witness in the Mueller investigation. So Nader, let me explain why Nader is actually worse. Nader is currently awaiting trial on charges of sex trafficking and child pornography. So this guy is allegedly a pedophile. Oh, great. So, so we got this guy now. This guy, funneling money. I know it sounds like... It, it sounds like a story that's like straight out of the fever swamps of, you know, the right wing media, but it's not, it's not. You do have powerful people that are giving money to both Democrats and Republicans, elected politicians or politicians they hope to get elected through illicit means, breaking campaign finance laws in order to do it, in order to influence politicians. Ugh. Is gross. It's gross, but this is what's going on. Uh, and so I actually do got to give credit for the Trump, uh, not Trump himself, but to the Justice Department for actually doing their job. Now, again, uh, Nader has a history of child pornography, sex trafficking charges, right? Back in 1991, he was busted and served six months in jail for possessing child porn. So that's awful. And now, again, we see these people that are using their money from scamming numerous people to funnel the politicians like Donald Trump, Hillary, Democrats, Republicans, other people we don't even know of. And again, it's super, super gross. Uh, I don't give the Trump Justice Department credit very often, but in this case, regardless of the politics here, Going after these kind of people, that's exactly what we like to see. And so hopefully we can get these criminals off the street, clean up that kind of corruption, uh, and throw these people in prison, man. That's where they belong. Lock them up. Lock them up. Hey, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the... YouTube algorithm, messing around with view counts, etc. We're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYTNation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look, you know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron, patreon.com slash TYT Nation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.